probably something that uh, does apply to all the academies is that the kind of friendliness of the staff and the engagement with you know the teachers that they kind of get to know the consultants and the consultants get to know them by name I think that's something that they really appreciate and really enjoy. I think the teaching the tutors the lecturers the doctors are well beyond my expectation they're very helpful very assistive yeah very kind as well yeah the one thing that you need to do is have a really good basic knowledge or a basic set of skills that you need to have to become a doctor and that basic set of skills is really drilled into them into in the smaller hospitals and that's your empathy the way you talk to patients the way you take a history the way you examine them and come up with a diagnosis that's the core principles of any doctor no matter where they end up in their career. It's that set of skills that's going to prove useful to them. The first time that I got to meet a patient by myself, so I was on placement in geriatrics um, in the hospital here, um, and the consultant asked me to take a history and examine a patient by myself and then kind of report the findings to them. And just the fact that I got on so well with the patient did kind of make me feel like I, I can see myself doing this for the rest of my life and I, I think it was a sort of a relief when I was able to do it and I enjoyed it so much. So definitely that kind of reassured me that I was in the right place. I take students for their GP placement um, when they're in their, their fourth year on their GP attachment. It's one of the first times that students get kind of to take the lead with, with the patients. Um, they find out why the patient is here, they get their full story, and then they get a glimpse of the doctor-patient relationship when it's, it's slightly different to what they may have seen with consultants and hospital-based um, teams. We know our patients really, really well. In, in the community and they get to see that and they get to see so much they'll bring all different aspects um, of their uh, learning. Students as well they get a lot of one-to-one -one time um, with us so I suppose they, they get to know the GP who they're, they're shadowing and then they get immersed into the administrative side of um, general practice as well. We do run a business um, so they get to see some of, some of that side of it. Um, so I, th I think it's, it's a lovely experience for, for our students. The, the most interesting part that I like in Sligo, the scenery. Yeah. And, um, and the people as well, they're very welcoming. They're very, you know, very friendly. So it feels like, it feels like a home, yeah. Seeing all the sights, all the beaches, um, lovely walks um, has really been of benefit to me. Climbing, knocking away, um, and we've planned to climb Ben Bulban in a few weeks, um, which will be a challenge, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. So I suppose spending loads of time outdoors. Ledra Kenny is one of the busiest hospitals in Ireland, and for that reason, it's brilliant for the, the undergraduate medical students. For that reason, it's also very, very busy for the doctors. So people get a really, really rich clinical experience here. We have consultants that are very, very committed to training and teaching. And we try to teach empathy and, uh, and compassion as well. And I, I think, you know, anywhere in the world, you know, try and beat that really with a stick. As a med student being in the hospital, I think it's been interesting to see the vulnerabilities of patients. And I think that patients are very happy to have us around because they feel comfortable asking us questions and they know that we might not know everything, but we can go and seek other help and seek information and come back to them and deliver news in a more gentle way sometimes. We have the time to spend with them, talking to them about their history and their life. So I think it's provided us with a lot of reassurance as well and a lot of reassurance for patients um, to be here. Patients are the best teachers, so you know we, we can talk about things in the classroom environment, but really until you get that opportunity to talk to a patient and to have the privilege of entering into this sort of 
part of their life. You know, you get this kind of snapshot as to who they are and, and being able to do that is, it is a huge privilege and to recognize that as the privilege that it is. Um, and also to respect the patient as that teacher because they are going to be the people who are going to push you along your, your path. It's not going to be, you know, the textbook that you're going to refer to. The textbook, yes, will supplement that, in, that interaction, but it's being around patients and respecting them and learning from them. When I kind of get to see firsthand the impact that something is having on the patient, then I kind of understand like the importance of, you know, um, treating the patient as a whole and in terms of their like psychological well-being and their emotional well-being. Donegal is quite a big county and I think that in order to appreciate it properly, um, it's a good thing that you're up here for a full year. There's lots of hikes, mountains to climb, plenty of beautiful beaches, surfing, Dunfanaghy and um, Bundoran are very popular and just the sound of the sea and the waves and there's not a sinner around. It's a great place to just go and forget about any stress that you've had that day or to realise that there's more to it than work and, you know. We're very fortunate that we have such a beautiful building and the actual physical space is much more important than we credit a, a sacred or spiritual space, but for everybody, for those of all faiths and no faith. An academy is essentially breaking down the medical program into small group teaching. Everybody is individual here. Nobody hides in the corners. Nobody gets left behind or forgotten. Mayo Medical Academy is definitely the place to be and being a Mayo Medical student I would understand the privilege of being that student here. I remember like the first week in the hospital I really all that I wanted to do was eat, sleep, repeat in the hospital and and you know talk to patients. I loved it. I loved the environment and I knew that you know that feeling was going to stick with me and it still is here now. Yeah. <laughs> I probably was nervous in third year going into placements and then it kind of diminished as, as, as time went on, but now I just love going in. So you learn the etiquette quite quickly and you learn what people like to see and what people don't like to see. So it's really simple to get started. You just say your name, introduce yourself and show that you're willing to learn. Often if you like lay your skills out there on the table, you know, I've practiced doing whatever and I'd love to practice it some more and lay out what you'd like to do, um, what you'd like to see, what your goals are. They'll be delighted to have you, and particularly in ED, the consultants are so welcoming. They're so excited to have someone to teach. Then the other thing would be just to be really friendly. Um, even if it's not your natural way, I, don't, I kind of am an extrovert anyway, but you just have to pretend, you know, and it becomes easier and easier to just talk to people, make good eye contact, um, ask them how they are, because people in healthcare often don't get asked how they are. Um, and they'll really like you then, and they'll take you under their wing. So just be nice, that's the main thing. Certainly the rural academies um, are afforded this lovely opportunity of working down at, at community level, at, at village level, at household level. Um, half the world lives in rural areas, but three quarters of the healthcare workers live in urban and metropolitan areas. So there's always been a mismatch. And part of the academy um, ideal would be to try and address that mismatch. I actually have this really good memory going out to Westport for my GP placement and it was so clear and I could see Kirkpatrick and I was like, oh, this is why I love being on placement of this is class. The view is unbelievable. Where would you rather be? I was honestly mesmerized by the views. I could not take it in. And you know, like I usually take pictures just to show my family, but literally no picture did any justice. You know, it was just like there were mountains on the side and there was like the, the farms on one side and then the beach and the waves and the skies. And it was just breathtaking. And I don't really get to experience that much, you know, where I'm from. This is the smallest hospital. Everybody knows everybody. Uh, as we know, I mean, this hospital is a level three hospital. We have access to different type of patient, a different patient cohort. And that gives them um, a diversity of experience in clinical medicine. In particular, it's amazing experience in personal level and professional level as well, where like I can advance more in my career. A small place can offer a lot if you look for it. 
I really thought I was going to like a small town in Ireland. Uh, people would be very different from me. And I think maybe that I had anxieties around that. But I think coming here, you really realize like, uh, you just meet people from all over the world and all over Ireland and all over Europe. And so you, even though I'm here to learn about medicine, I think I, the biggest takeaway was really getting to learn about people's lives and their personal lives and um, how medicine shaped them, be it our teaching staff or even our patients, you know, working in a community-based healthcare, you really get to know your patients and they always have a story to tell and why they're there. Um, and I think that's probably the biggest takeaway from being in Valencia for me. I find that in Port Anquila, it's probably to do with the community environment. Um, the patients trust the team and then by extension they trust us and they're very open and they're very um, accommodating. And I mean, the more engagement we get with patients, the better we will train. For example, I saw my first uh, C-section yesterday and even the nurse was saying to me beforehand, she was saying it's such a privilege. I mean, you see somebody's baby before they do, some, you know what I mean? It's, it's a huge privilege to be able to be there in those moments with people and um, as I say, the patients in the hospital, they're, they're great with that. I provide um, clinical skills training, you know, and the benefit of those skills really is that they become much more effective, they're more efficient at doing it. So by the time they get to do it in, in a patient, they're extremely confident. So we're creating better patient safety as well in the long term, you know. Um, on top of that then, I also run like the simulation scenarios as well, which is, are done in mannequins. So we create it as real as possible in a non-threatening environment. And I think also the benefit for students in working simulation is they're working as a team. Because in the real situation, they will be working as a multidisciplinary team. And it's about developing their personalities and the other skills, you know, that don't come in medicine. It's their personality and it's their verbal communication because that's what's vital. So I actually decided to live locally. The great thing I suppose about Port Dunkida is that you can do either. I mean, if you do choose to commute, which is handy for people if maybe you want to stay in your college accommodation or you don't want the hassle of finding a new place, it's very easy to commute. It's 50 minutes, give or take. There's a lot to learn to become a doctor, um, but to become a, a really well-rounded person, you need to have things outside as well. It's always reassuring that each generation of students we can see um, is transformative. They, they are ready, they are prepared, and they have the flexibility to respond to the challenges of their particular generation. The best thing is when you're walking down the corridor here and you see the alumni of NUIG who are now SHOs, and now looking after your father, your mother, your uncle, your aunt, and you know that those patients are in safe hands. That's, that's the best thing.